Hey YouTube, Meat Magnet here. Welcome to Guide 6 of our AE2 series. This one is titled ME Controller Modifications and Organization. So, what we're going to go over is a little bit about max dimensions for ME controllers. Um, a little bit of how those actually are pieced together and then how to easily move from a smaller ME controller to a new one as your base expands. So, let's get to it. If you take a look at this giant, crazy, weird structure right here, this is your max dimensions for ME controller. This is a 7x7x7. Seven by seven by seven. It's ridiculously large, provides a, this, this particular one, provides a stupid amount of channels for use. However, this is not the max amount of channels available. There is somewhere along the lines of 60,000 channels available with peer-to-peer -peer networks. We are absolutely not going over that today. What we're going to go over is a little bit of how to put these things together to maximize the amount of channels if you have the available resources to do something like this. And then I'm going to show you how to easily get rid of this little ME controller here and pipe the rest of this stuff in really, really easy because it's just a matter of Pull in a few cables, stringing things a little bit differently, and uh, get you ready to rock and roll. So let's take a look at this giant structure of MB network. Let's take a look at this controller. So what we've got here is there are a few rules for this ME controller. Now, all ME blocks must be connected. So, or uh, controller blocks must be connected. Sorry. So if we were to take and make another ME controller here, and this is a valid structure, let's make this more cubic. Okay, so this this would be a valid ME network, and just to validate that, let's actually let's throw some cryostabilized flux duct on here, just for the sake of showing this. Yeah, let's just string this guy out here. And there you go. So this is a valid ME network. Now, these three networks are actually completely separated. This network here, this network here, and this network here are actually three separate potential networks. Now, we might be thinking, oh, we could absolutely just go ahead and we'll just connect these together. No, that doesn't work. You can't do that. So all ME controllers on the same network absolutely have to be part of the same structure. Now that structure is limited to a 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven area. So this giant structure here is the biggest your ME controller could ever possibly be. So just keep that in mind. You are limited to 7x7x7. Seven by seven by seven. Let's take these out of here. Now there's another rule in here. And it's it's kind of a different rule, and it's easy to confuse. If you look on uh, AE2's website, so that's ae-mod.info/me-controller. Yeah, you can find it on their website. If you actually look up ME controller, the third rule on there is that ME controller can only have two adjacent blocks and at most one access. So if that violates the rule, it it just it'll sh shut those controllers off. So I'll demonstrate that right now. What's going on here is this is perfectly acceptable. We can build this out right, no problem. Um, just for the sake of doing this, we'll do it on the inside too. Now you'll see that on the corners, since this is different, th this is actually a different axis, that these corners are absolutely okay. These are fine. If we go and actually put another layer on here, you see how these are starting to turn white? That means these controllers aren't being used. So in order to actually utilize this, there is kind of some techniques to go through and get these to function to your liking. But a lot of this stuff depends on how you want to use peer-to-peer -peer tunnels. Now that's something for another guide because this gets incredibly complicated. And it's not something that's really easy to explain right off the bat. So I'm going to do probably two videos on that. 
maybe even more depending because there's actually a few different types of peer-to-peer -peer, um, controller stuff but just keep in mind that if you put two of these together right next to each other and add another one that some of this gets really confusing see how this one actually shut off these are actually in the same axis and they're adjacent to each other so this is not actually valid however if we went like this that is so these get incredibly complicated it's just you have to know the rule that two adjacent blocks in at most one axis is the best this will get if it violates the rule it'll disable and that controller won't be used so but this is these are all perfectly valid sides you can get 32 channels out of each side on this controller so keep that in mind so how do we simply migrate networks? Do we need to tear all of our drives off here and go hook it up over there? Absolutely not. The easiest way to probably migrate this entire network is simply remove this controller, since we won't need any of that stuff. We'll remove the controller. We'll get some of this cryo flux duct out of the way. And let's just hook this guy back in. So we'll just drag our dense flux over here. Give it a second. Okay, and there we go. So if we used our dense cables here, we can see visually that these did hook back up. Right now we're looking at 22 of 32 channels. What you might notice is when you're migrating from network to network, that some of your stuff won't be working. Now we've set this up so that these work just fine. Um you'll see that some of your stuff isn't actually working so how do you remedy that well that all depends on what you've used for cable I like to use dense cables coming off the ME no matter what just because it gives you the max allowable amount of channels per side of a controller now if we were to actually change this up just tear this stuff out just to show as an example of how important it is to actually utilize those dense cables. And let's go okay, so those are maxed. Let's try and hook these blue ones up because this is going to show you exactly how important it is. But these are all missing channels except these last, well, this last one. So this is the last device on that line that's capable of actually being powered. So one thing to keep in mind there so when you actually pull these off or pull pull your old ME controllers out just make sure that you're using dense cables in the newest one um, it's just it's gonna save you a lot of time and it's gonna keep you from from a few headaches just to have that stuff on there so that's about it for this guy this is Meef Magnet I'll talk to you guys later